the Revolutionary Family. Have you signed up for a life group? Stop trying to navigate through this thing called life alone. We're so much better together. Sign up today. Welcome to Life Revolution Church. We are so excited that you have joined us for today's online experience. Listen, if you are new here, we want to know that you're watching. Go ahead and drop your name and drop where you are tuning in from in the comments and we will meet you right there. If you're watching from Facebook, make sure that you like and follow. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go ahead and subscribe because we don't want you to miss a thing. Now let's go ahead and get ready to worship.
Are tuned in to the right place today. I fully believe, our whole church believes you are tuned in to the right place today and we are glad that you are here. Listen, I want to take a few moments to welcome you further to this experience. In a moment, we're going to get into God's Word. Uh, we believe that God has you here for a very intentional reason and that today we're going to walk through God's Word very intentionally, and I believe you are going to be blessed by it. Uh, we just ended a series, uh, it was called All Things New. Uh, we ended that last week. We're in an open week this week, but next week, do not miss it, because next week we are starting a brand new, what? A brand new series, and it's called Secure the Bag. Secured the bag that begins next week. You'll hear more about that later. I want to get into this word in just a moment. First, let me pause and say this is a time where we all can get involved. On the bottom of the screen right now, you see multiple giving options. Before we get to this word, we're open the door so that we can demonstrate and do what God has called us to do by being tithers and sacrificial givers to God. Listen here, while you are preparing and uh, to give, the Lord instructs us. He desires for us to partner with him as we spread the gospel, as we take care of his house, as we um, take care of uh, our surrounding community and meet and, and exceed needs, as we empower people. All this happens because of your generosity. And even today, to be even more specific, we have made the decision to partner with schools in our area. And so today, if you want to give specifically over and above your tithe and offering, I want to challenge you in this. You can give specifically over and above your tithe and offering to an area that we call Give Hope. Give Hope is our initiative to give towards our community. And we partner with the school uh, to be able to um, supply them with what they need during this time. And I believe that as you give in this time and you hear more about the stories that we'll be able to celebrate, it's going to incredibly bless your life to know 
you partner with your church to make it happen. Not only that, I'm also during the time of Give Hope, uh, there's an opportunity to give towards Haiti Relief. Um, there are many um, who are still hurting. And so during this time of Give Hope, we're going to extend generosity locally and internationally. We're going to hit both at the same time. So I'm calling our church to respond in this moment. Yes, we're going to tithe. Yes, we're going to give. But today, go over and above that. Push over and beyond that so that adults and kids can be impacted by your generosity. I want to pray with you. God, thank you for this opportunity, God, to give. For those, Heavenly Father, who may have even fallen off from, give, from giving, I pray, God, today is the day they get back on track so the house never goes without. I believe you for their household. I believe you for what they are giving. I believe you got to multiply beyond their wildest imagination, God, as they trust you even during times like this. The church is called to thrive in this hour. God, thank you, God, for faithful partners who believe in what we are doing as we advance the kingdom of God. There's no better place to invest in the world than in your kingdom. God, we love you. God, we honor you. God, we worship you. And there's nobody like our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Listen, if you believe that, take a few moments and just clap your hands, even from wherever you are watching from, and just rejoice in the fact that we get the opportunity to give, to sow, to celebrate. And I can't wait for you to hear more about the stories of, of, of people who were impacted by what you just did. Amen. Amen. If you are ready for the word, drop let's go in the comments. Listen, I got some who are in the room with me. Can y'all real quick let's say, let's go? Let's go. Oh, I hear that. I hear it. Y'all are, I can tell, y'all are ready. I'm going to give you all what God gave me as we walk through his word. All right? I want you to look with me at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, Mark 2, and verse number 1. It's in the uh, New Testament, um, right after Matthew, it's Mark. Um, look at this, Mark chapter 2. We're going to begin in verse number 1. I'm so glad you're here. Listening to this, and I pray that you are greatly impacted by it. Mark 2 and verse 1 says this, And when he had returned, talking about Jesus, Carmen, it says, when he, had, when he had returned to Capernaum, which is his, it's his home base for ministry, okay? When he had returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was back at home or at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room. Someone say that, no more room. Not even at the door. You could not get in. It's packed out. We're sold out. No one else could come in. And he was preaching the word to them. Listen, what would happen if people came together, hear me, and there's no celebrity? The only thing that mattered was the name of Jesus. I believe we are returning to an hour right now where people would gather, come together, and it won't be for a name, it'll be for the name, and that name is Jesus. How many of you believe that with me right now? That people would gather for prayer, people would gather for worship, people would gather to hear God's word, and it'll blow our minds. It won't be for fame, not for status, but because of what they believe. He was preaching the word to them. Verse 3. And they came bringing to him a paralytic or someone who was paralyzed, carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd. What? They could not get near him because of the crowd. They, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. Last verse, verse 5. And when Jesus saw their faith, Jeremiah, listen to this right here. And when Jesus saw their faith, one more time for those who, who are still sleepy. And when Jesus saw 
their faith. He said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Son, your sins are forgiven. He saw their faith and responded by saying, son, your sins are forgiven. His friends carry him to Jesus. I want to give you a title this, 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 today. It's very simple. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen to this right here. Um, I love how Jesus emphasizes uh, the importance of team. That even as he walked the earth, that he, he stressed the importance of us being in community with other people, going through life together uh, while fulfilling purpose. Uh, these can be extremely tough times when you are experiencing them alone and these times can bring great pain that may even come from relationships. Anybody, I believe many of you, you know how it feels to be in relationship and experience pain from that relationship. Isn't it so interesting that when it comes to relationships, on one hand, they can bring great reward. On the other hand, they can bring great pain. Isn't it crazy how the same thing can bring both scenarios? That in the place that I was impacted and had some of the greatest memories of my life, it's the same place that we have experienced some of our greatest pain. According to the first disciples, um, uh, they understood and they began to form groups as they matured in their faith. In the comments right now, or even in the building right now as well, I want you to say and type the word groups. Groups. They form groups. This is from Acts 2, Acts 4, and beyond. Jesus modeled the importance of team. They followed it up by forming groups. In other words, when it comes to their faith, they never walked alone. They never walked alone. They had groups, and these groups, here it is, it's biblical community, not some fake gossip. I'm here for whatever. No, 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 no. This is accurate, authentic, biblical community where no one goes without. How many of you would love to be a part of a church, hear me, that looks out for the people who are within it rather than gossiping about you? I'm down to spread the gospel with you. It's totally different. One is gossip, one is gospel. Rather than criticizing you, I'm here to care for you. The Bible says, hear me, they were devoted to prayer. They were devoted to the teaching. They were devoted to fellowship. They were devoted to breaking bread with their group. They were not going without. They were walking together. How would you feel to know you were a part of a group that allows you to be able to walk together and fulfill the mission that God has called us to fulfill? I love it because in Acts 5 and verse 42, the Bible says they walked together daily in the temples and from house to house. Look at this, which means the large gathering and the small gathering work together. Y'all hear this right now. The large and the small work together. It says again, they were walking together daily in the temple and from house to house. How many times have we neglected that last part, that house to house? How many times have you left your home to come and sing to God, then gone back home and gave God nothing? Listen, this right here. Listen, hear me. I don't want, hear this. I'm not coming for you. I'm just, I'm just coming to lift your, lift this thing up to God and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold, hold. This can't continue. I'm telling you right here. God says, I want you to even worship me from the place you lay your head at night. In other words, I want your kids, your grandkids, all those who, who, who live with you and around you to be impacted by the faith you claim. Write this down. We're built different and better together. Yeah, Look at yeah. this. Y'all, we built yeah. different. 
Y'all hear me right now? We built, we built different. Listen, we are built different. We are built different and we are better together. This is our, our model. This is our statement. This is our theme when it comes to groups. I'm afraid that many people who follow Christ are not familiar with what it really means to walk in community with other people. We know how it feels to attend a gathering but we haven't quite gotten this thing about what it means to walk in community with others. So today, I'm gonna to break it down even, even further. The Bible says in Mark 2, uh, in verse number one through five, I read those to you. The Bible, if we was to go further in this text, we will see in Luke 5 and verse 17, which tells the exact same story, right? The same story, it says in Luke 5, 17, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Wait a minute. Jesus is up teaching. He's preaching and declaring the word, right? And the Bible says, and the power of God was present to heal him. I immediately want to pray right here. Join in with me. God, make us more aware of your presence. Wait a minute. There were these scribes and these Pharisees and these, all these people who were highly religious, Hear me. And they were sitting down just staring and watching Jesus, not realizing the power of God was present to heal. How many of you are sitting in your house right now? Are you sitting in this space right now? I need you to understand the power of God is present to heal you. Listen to me. The only reason they too did not get healed is because they were more concerned with criticizing Jesus than receiving what he had to offer. It says the power of God was present to heal him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, wait, wait a minute. That means if we are the church and we carry the spirit of God, that means the power of God lives on the inside of us. Which means everywhere we go, we ought to be seeing authentic change happening. Listen here, on your job, in your neighborhood, going down the road, in your neighborhood, in your house, everything should be being impacted because of what you believe. How many of you are with me right now? There's a power of God was present to heal them. I love this text, y'all, because in verse number two, it says all these people show up. Check it out, Cordell. People who were invited and uninvited. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. What would you do if people show up to your house uninvited? <laughs> Some of y'all like, I, I would not answer the door. I want to answer it. You ever have someone come to your house and, and you start talking to them through like your video camera, like, like you got Ring, Vivid, whatever, whatever you, like, and you're talking to them through your, what you need? Huh? I'm not home right now. No, in good and well, you were sitting right there on your sofa just chilling. Uninvited. How many people, hear me, have permission to come into your house and they have what I call rights to the refrigerator? Which means they can come in and open the door and make a sandwich on the spot. How many of you? I, 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 yeah, people who do that right now. Not many, right? Now, it's something about the house that speaks. This is personal to me. And I'm afraid we've transferred that same thing over to faith to say, hey, this is personal to me. And I don't know who I can share this with. This right here blows me away because we don't get the details of what Jesus was teaching, but we do know it was so powerful that people came from near and far to hear what he was saying. The Bible says in verse number three that four men, how many men? Four men carry this paralyzed person to Jesus. Look at this. His condition was so visible, it screamed help. But my question to you today is this. His issue was visible. But how many of us are screaming silently, help? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you scream and be silent at the same time? In other words, your mouth is not moving, but everything on the inside of you is saying, help. 
oh, geez. some of us are coming to the place, and we, some of us have, have also experienced this too, where we've hit this place of brokenness where it has forced us to open our mouth. Pastor, why did that happen? It happened because God said, I'm going to allow you to experience this because I am breaking the silence on your life. You can no longer live in this way. You can no longer live in this way. I'm breaking the silence. I'm shattering the glass ceiling on your worship. I'm deepening your faith. Hear me here. We don't know their names. We don't know what they're dealing with in their minds and these hearts. All we know is that these four friends are carrying their friend. Look at this. They're not complaining. They're not arguing. They're not gossiping. All they care about is the outcome, which is their friend being healed. How many of you would love to be a part of a group? Hear me. That's not gossiping. That's not complaining. That's not arguing. And all they care about is that the group becomes more whole. Hear me here. We don't know where they were in their faith, but we do know they care enough about this one person, even though their shoulders got tired, even though their legs got weary, even though their, their, their feet was painful for walking for miles. Even though their mind was frustrated, they went through all these things so that one person in their group could benefit. Question right here. Two, in fact. Who is in your circle and who has close access? Write it down. Write it down. Who is in your circle? Who is in your circle and, and who has close access? The reason why I'm having us to answer or ask these two questions is because of this. This is the time, be clear here, that we must take inventory of what's around us. Who is in your circle? Who is in your circle? Who has access? We have to take inventory of what is around us. Why do you say that? Here's why. Is because we place security and insurance on what we value. On our house, on your car, on your jewelry. We put security on houses. We put insurance on things. Hear me. But what kind of security do you have on your mind and your spirit? Or can anything at any time access it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. If we're supposed to put security on what we value, why don't we have any kind of security on our mind and on our spirit? Hear me here. Some of us are overloaded and overworked and tired and exhausted here because we refuse to put up some guardrails. Hear me here. We love people so much that we say, I just want all, all of it to get done. I want to be happy. I want you to be happy. But question, is pleasing them killing you? <sighs> is pleasing them killing you? In other words, hear me here. Do I have a dysfunctional loyalty? Am I committed to something that helped me one time before, but because my heart is so big, I'm now allowing them to manipulate my emotions and keep me like an invisible string and yoking me around because one time they helped me out in a tight spot. And because, be clear here, because I have these insecurities on the inside, I allow them to keep manipulating me. Are y'all helping me right here today? Because insecure people find other insecure people to manipulate. Who is in your circle? <laughs> Who, 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 who is in your circle? These, these four, well, these five, they formed a group. And the group, hear me, the group has some non-negotiables. Are y'all ready right here? The group has some non-negotiables. And the group basically said this, hey, if you hurting, I'm hurting. If you're going through, I'm going through. If you tired, I'm tired. Hear me. 
If you're struggling, I got you. The group has some non-negotiables, and I'm afraid that many in the church have no non-negotiables, so anything goes. But right here, right now, today, I am calling our church, hear me, to enter into a space where we begin, slow it down, to trust again. I'm calling our house deeper into community. I'm calling our house deeper into a community of people who gather large and small, and we make sure that no one goes without. Pastor Alice, that can't happen in America. We're too, oh, no, no, no. God has stirred my soul, and I don't lie on God, that he is being, here is, he is bringing revival, not to just locations, but to souls and spirits. He is bringing revival to it where people will meet and gather and connect. Why? Because they don't want to see people go without. I refuse to let gangs treat their people better than church does. All right. All right. They formed a group with a non-negotiable that serves a purpose that's greater than any one person could carry. Imagine trying to carry another grown person and lift them off the ground. Y'all, that would be heavy. Some of us would break every bone, ah, 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 in, every, in our back, trying to pull up somebody, hear me, that's grown. But many times, mentally and spiritually, come close, come close. We're trying to carry people that God never told us to carry. I'm going to give it to y'all straight from the Bible because I'm trying to think that I'm giving y'all merely my opinion. The Bible says very clearly in Galatians 6, it says very clearly, it says this, if your fellow believer is overtaken by sin, restore them in a spirit of gentleness, bear their burdens with them. He never says, hey, allow them to be a dump truck to you. We're called to bear with them and to walk with them and to intercede with them, not to be dump trucks. Where you just dump, walk away free, and now I'm carrying what you dumped on me. Here. We were never called to do this. We are called, hear me, to be so saturated in the presence of God that as people come to us, we're not pointing them to us. We're pointing them to him. You, some of you are about to get free right here. You can be so much more free if you will stop feeling like, hear me, here it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because when they come to you and you feel like you have the answer, it strokes your ego and it feeds your pride. So you keep giving them enough to keep them coming back to you to fill a void in, oh. So you become an idol in their life and it makes you feel good, but you're dying. Today is the day that we stop pulling them closer to us and start pointing them back to him. Hear me right here. The mass issue, y'all good? Let's go deeper. The mass issue was not seen as an inconvenience. How many times in church and ministry do we, do we, when it comes to other people, we see them as inconveniences? I'm too busy to deal with you. Your, your problems are not my problems. You're going through what? Oh, that's not my issue. Why don't you call the intercessory team and let them pray for you because I'm too caught up in my... to do anything for you, although we're all called to be ministers or servants of the gospel. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Can y'all handle this right now? Hear me. What happens when we no longer see people as inconveniences but we see them as God sees them. How does God see them, Cordell? God sees us not as inconveniences, but as opportunities to express and demonstrate love. When we get the two confused, we'll throw everything off. 
If people are not inconveniences, but they're actually the, an opportunity to express the love of God, it changes literally everything. Really quick here, it's, it's, it's very important to have people in your life, and please put it in the comments and say it out loud in, in, the, in, in the building right now, that can carry some weight. <laughs> that can carry some weight, that can carry some weight. Not only is, is, is that important, but it's important to note this very, very clearly. Not only can they carry some weight, but they also know who to carry me to and where to take me. This is key. This is key. <laughs> this is key. Not only should they be able to carry weight, but also know as you're helping me carry the weight, who are you carrying me to and where are we going? Why are you saying that? Because God showed me this very, very clearly. Because some people are faithful. In other words, they can carry some weight, but y'all values are different. Your end goals are different. So you ever been in a spot where you was going through and you was experiencing some stuff and you had some people you hit up and they was like, hey, man, I hear you going through that. So what I want us to do is go turn up. Let's go drink it away. That's, you know what we do? You, 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 you know how we used to do it? Hey, if it worked then, it's, it's sure to work now. You ever, be, be for real. You ever been in that spot where, where you're like, man, I really don't think I do that no more, but, but it's, ah, ah, it's important. Yes, you can carry us away, but where are you carrying me to? Do you want me, do you want, I think the Holy Spirit, do you want to see destiny and purpose fulfilled in my life? I'm probably going to get in trouble right here, but it's all good. Some people that we are in relationship with want so bad to take care of their fleshly needs that they'll even, whatever it takes to make sure their flesh gets pleased, they're willing to do it because they are not concerned about you meeting or getting close to where God desires for you to go. So if it's the bottle, if it's a smoke, if it's sex, if it's, if it's for uh, fornication, if it's adultery, they'll tell you whatever you need to get you through in the moment. But who am I talking to right now? You are sick and tired of just getting through moments. You really want to be free. You really want to be healed. You really want to experience his power. I'm telling you, take inventory of the people who are around you. This... It's key. Take inventory. Take inventory. Take inventory. They're, they're carrying this man. But here's what's crazy, though. They get there, and they cannot get in. Why? The crowd had the whole house covered. I could imagine if I was done, they was like, wait a minute. We came all this far for this? You ever drove to somebody's house and they asked you to pick them up and you spent all your good gas getting to their house and they wasn't ready? Or they had you waiting on them? You're like, wait a minute, I spent my good gas to get way over here. And you telling me you will be here in 10 minutes? Oh, no. Oh, this right here is a problem. You ever showed up and you couldn't believe the results that were present? Here's what God gave me. Write it down. The purpose of why they came was greater than the obstacle they encountered. <laughs> Y'all good? The purpose of why they came was greater than the obstacle they encountered, which is why they did not allow the obstacle to stop them from doing what God had called them to do. How many times did you hit an obstacle, then quit? Hit an obstacle, then fall off? I'm telling you, this is the power of being with the right group. It's like having a trainer in your corner. You need people to walk with who are more interested on you getting to your end goal than falling off midway. People who will encourage you and push you and challenge you and really want to see you do, do well. Hear me here. Last part of this. Very clearly right here. Even if it means 
them extending an opportunity to you and it makes you pass them. When you get the right people in your corner, hear me, they're not competing with you. Eric, come on, come, come help me out here. They're not competing. Y'all hear me right now? They're not competing with you. They're not competing with you. They simply want to see purpose fulfilled. Hear me. You need some people who, who are not competing with you. Hear me. Some people. Help me out, Erica. Stand right here real quick. Very simple. Some people who don't mind saying, this right here, I think is a good opportunity for you. Please take one step forward. Even though we're in the same group, I don't mind her being ahead of me because in the end, we're all fulfilling what God told us to fulfill. Many times in, the, in church, not kingdom, when it comes to old, old mindsets in church, when we saw anybody getting up, don't let somebody sing the song we thought we were supposed to sing. That was my solo. You singing my solo? Oh, this is an absolute problem. But what happens when we understand, not in old church thinking or traditional thinking, but in the church way of being kingdom minded that says, I'm willing to push. I'm willing to pull. Because why? I want to see the kingdom win. <laughs> Even if it means you get ahead of me, really, in the end, what God says this is really not about someone else being ahead of you. It's about all of y'all getting close to me. Because if she advances and she looking out for me, Erica, pull me real quick, and she puts her hand out and pulls me up. Listen, we all going to win. Where are the people who are so committed to doing what God has called us to do? All we want to see is the kingdom of God win. When you win, I win. When you lose, I lose. But if we lose, well, we're not losing, we're learning. And we're growing and we're pushing together. Someone please shout push. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Erica. Listen, this right here is what God has called us to do because God is shifting your perspective as he builds your faith. What I just gave you is a total perspective shift. Because the Bible says it's very clear. They get there and there's no more room and they make the decision to, to go up on the roof. Wait a minute. They go up on the roof of the house now. Stay close. Now, this day, it was like the homes of today. They had stairs that walked up alongside of the house and the houses were um, had flat roofs made of mud and made of clay and made of dirt and made of straw. Because the Bible says they go up on the roof carrying this man, and they start tearing up the roof. They start uncovering the roof. Wait a minute. They get to an obstacle, but they don't let it stop them. Why is that? Because they said, we carrying something that needs his presence. In other words, I'm standing on the exterior of the house, and I can't get in. But I have the faith to see my friend get healed. So whatever it takes for us to get him in his presence, that's the thing that we're going to do. Listen to this right here. So they make the decision that, y'all, if we can't go through, we got to go up. Listen in right here. What happens when we make the decision? Even when the old way of doing things closes, we have no choice but to go up. Where are the people who understand we're not going just through these times, we're going up in these times because some people are determined to get into simply, hear me, his presence. They tore the whole roof off because, hear this, because limitations always breeds creativity. Oh, Tess, please help me out right here. Please help. Listen, y'all listen because limitations, limitations always breed creativity. What do you mean by that? What I mean is this. You ever, for, for, for those of you who've never been through nothing, this part is not for you. I just said limitations breed creativity. Have you ever not had enough food to eat? You had peanut butter, 
but no jelly. Mm. Mm. You had sandwich meat, but no cheese. Ooh. <laughs> you had tomatoes, but no meat. You had this amount of ketchup left in the bottle, and you was just about to throw it away. But somebody wisely yourself said, hey, you better put some water in that. Come on. You better shake it up and make, here it is. <laughs> you better take the ingredients that you do have and make that thing work. You get the most creativity when you experience sometimes the greatest limitations. So what the world is saying right now is a limitation. God is saying, nope. For my church, it's a time to get even more creative. And the creativity he is talking about does not begin with our hands. It begins in our hearts. Listen to me right here. When we get to the point of repenting before the Father saying, God, I don't have it all together. I don't have it figured out. But what I do know is we about to worship like we never have before. We are about to celebrate like we never have before. We want something from you that man and that woman cannot give us. So God is saying, I'm bringing together groups. I'm bringing together gatherings, people who will cry out to me, who desire me, who want more of me, who are going after me, who want my presence, and they won't let closed doors stop them. Where are the people who understand closed doors will not stop me in this season of my life? If the door is closed, I'll simply go up. Could it be it's not working because we keep trying to bring the same thing through the same door? I hear the Holy Spirit. And it's not working because what we're carrying, oh, is too big to fit through the door. So God shuts the door and says, I want you to create an opening that people have never been through before. It's too big for the door. We keep waiting on people to open up doors for us. But God is saying, I'm not just sending up people to open up doors. I'm looking for people who would tear the roof off. Where are the people who would tear roofs off? Where are the people who would literally bombard heaven with their mouth? Where are the people who are praying that God would stir the hearts of believers to reach unbelievers? This is an hour where your bored up, dried up traditions are not going to work. If we're going to reach unbelievers, people who are far from God, they have to see something authentic and different. And God says, and it's coming through you. Jesus and it's coming through you and I'm sending it through your hands I'm sending it through your mouth I'm sending it through your resources and your gifts and your calling and your anointing I'm sending it through you but if you keep trying to contain it all for yourself I'm telling you it's not going to accomplish what I call for it to accomplish this right here it's the hour where God is saying, I'm allowing the whole group to be blessed. Let me hear. Selfishness will not get its done. God wants to see who's willing to walk together. And here's what's crazy. God is calling us to open up roofs because we weren't even invited to come through the door. I'm going to say this again. God is calling us to creatively open up roofs because many of us were not invited to the door. These friends says they were uninvited. No one told them to come. Some of our prayers are not being answered because we keep waiting on people to give us a say of the day. I'm waiting on people to build a stage for me to stand on. God says, I'm not concerned about you building a stage. I am the stage. Stand on me. Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus. I'm not concerned about building the stage. Give me your platform. No, no, no. He says, I am the stage. If you stand on me, I'll take what I'll give you and I will spread it. I will expound it. I will ex Jesus. Stop worrying about trying to be on other people's platforms or other people's stages and on their jobs. No, no, no. God says, I've given you the ability to stand on me, a firm foundation who's unshakable. If you get on me, I'll show you what it looks like for a person to please God and to be blessed. Right? Jesus. I hear you, God. I'll show you. I'll show you. Tori, check this out. They let the man down through the roof. Jesus is up there preaching and straw and mud starts falling down. Is that a bed? You been to tell me there are some people after me who are willing to go to that extreme just to be in my presence? Let me stop the message and attend to the need of desperation. Can I tell you the living word does not mind stopping the word to make sure you get what he intends for you to get. Are y'all hearing me right now? He, they let down this man and he says, son, your sins are forgiven you. Wait a minute, hold on. But here's what's crazy. They didn't ask for what he extended. They didn't come for sins to be forgiven. They came because the man can't walk. What do you do when God gives you more than you even prayed for? Come on, somebody, please, 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 please. He starts answering prayers they never prayed for. Why would he do this? Here's what God revealed to me. They came for a physical need. Listen, but Jesus saw a deeper spiritual need. He was saying, if I heal your legs without dealing with your heart and your spirit, listen, you will walk right back into an old situation. So I'm not going to just heal your legs. You're already here. Let's deal with your heart too. Let's deal with your mind too. Let's deal with your spirit too. You're already here. Let's go ahead and take care of business while you're already right here in this place. He heals the physical and the spiritual. Here this last thought. This is crazy to me. And the people. that were sitting in the house, Ashley, watching all this happen. The Bible says they begin to talk about the situation in their minds. In other words, they see this happening and in their minds, not out of their mouth, in their minds, they start saying, who does this man think he is? He gonna forget, who does he think he is? And the Bible says, and Jesus perceived their thoughts. In other words, he's reading their text messages and their phones are locked. <laughs> what? What? No facial ID necessary. I'm looking in your phone and I'm seeing your thoughts. And your thoughts don't match what I'm doing right now. The Bible says that Jesus says, hey, hold on, hold on. Which one is easier? To forgive sins 
or to say, rise, take up your bed, and walk. I said, God, what's all this mean? Listen, when he said your sins are forgiven, it seems easier because no one can tell if a person's sins are forgiven. That's invisible. So here's what Jesus does, and we're done. He says, to prove to you that I have authority to do what you cannot see, I'm going to do what you can see, and that's to make this lame man walk. He uses what they can see to prove what they cannot see. Please come closer right here again. He uses what they can see. He makes the man get up and walk to prove if I can do the hard thing, then surely I can do the easy thing. Are y'all hearing me right now? He says, I'm going to do what you can see to show you I can do that too. In other words, I'm going to use this to prove that. I'm going to use this to prove that. I came for every person who's watching right now to let you know that God is doing what you can see to prove to you what you cannot see. God is taking what you can see. God will show you benefits in the relationship. God will have you show up to the doctor and they say, wait a minute, we saw something last week, but now we can't see nothing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm going to make sure the report you did get is clear to then show you if I can do that, surely I can do this. I need for the people who are receiving this right now to just go crazy and let God know, God, I thank you in advance for what you are doing, God. You are using what I cannot see. You are using what I can see to show me what I cannot see. And for that, God, I lift your name. God, for that, God, I worship you. God, for that, God, I'll praise you. God, for that, God, I'll honor you. God, for that, I'll love you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Father, for using what I can see actually to show me what I cannot see. Jesus. All because four friends made the decision to make sure their one friend got in two his presence. So here is your call to action. I am calling our church to trust God on this and to honor the leadership of this house on this to step into a group during this time. We are intentionally launching groups to make sure no one goes without. God has given me this, 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 this goal that's going to sound crazy. Jeremiah, that 75% of the people who are in our house will make the decision, I'm going to be a part of a group with somebody else. I'm not going to do life alone. How do I build trust? You build trust by extending trust. By being the person we've been talking about this week and last week as it pertains to being and becoming the church. The info is now on the screen. I want you to text that number right now. As you text that number, it says, I am becoming a part of a group. I am going to be and do what the scriptures have laid out for me. We have to get beyond this place of trying to have convenient faith. When we pick and choose how to live out faith before the Lord, when he's already written to us in scripture 
how to live it out. Church, get mad all you want. This is not Burger King. We can't have it our way. We want pickles, but no cheese. Do it this way, do it that way. No, we're telling God our order. When he's already laid before us his instructions and his commandments. I'm challenging you to trust God and to honor the leadership of this house to say, let's take the next step of faith by being a part of a group. Text that number. I want to be a part of a group. I don't even like people like that. I'm going out on a limb because the word of God, I trust this over everything else. I'm honoring this. Y'all, let's do this. Text that number. Text that number. While that's happening, if you all will, all of you who are here, will you all stand with me right here? And where you're watching from, I want you all to stand wherever you're watching from right now as well. If you're listening or in the car or whatever, of course, don't stand, but just listen in uh, very closely right here. Because I want to extend something to you. Groups were our focus of today. But there's something that we believe in that you must hear about. And it's that Jesus offers forgiveness. I'm extending my hand to you right now. And I believe this is how God extends himself to us to say, if you've never made the decision to say, Lord, I believe in what you have done for me. I believe that you have sacrificed out of love your own life to extend to us eternal life. I really believe that. I really believe only you can offer forgiveness and eternal life. And I want that. Listen, I want you to respond right now. I want you to respond right now and say, I, I am receiving right now. Maybe it's, a, it's an entire household right now. You're receiving it right now. We are making the, the, the decision to receive Christ for the very first time or recommit our lives right now. If that's you, respond right now. Respond right now. I'm committing right now. I'm recommitting right now. I need to be a part of a spiritual family I can grow with. I'm, I'm connecting right now. Respond in this hour. Church, pray with me right now. As many people, I believe, are responding in this hour. Listen, if souls are not being saved, we are not doing what God has called us to do. Respond right now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. God, souls are being saved and people are being connected in deeper family right now. God, thank you in advance. I want to pray here with you as you respond right now. God, thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity, God, to present your gospel. That lives are being saved right now. The lives are being changed right now. The families, God, are growing closer together right now. As we say, we are going to be the church you've called us to be. God, we love you. God, we celebrate decisions being made for you right now in the name of Jesus. And God, as heaven rejoices, we celebrate alongside heaven. Thank you, God, for all that you are. We honor you and we worship you and we love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, can we clap and rejoice right now? I'm believing God for crazy responses and stories right here, right now, in this hour. Listen, before we release you with a few more things um, you will hear about in a minute, I want you to know, if you were blessed in any way by what you heard today, share this mes message. I believe many souls were saved and many of you responded to say, I'm going to 
become a part of a group. I'm gonna do my part to move forward. If you miss the opportunity to be a part of a group, go back, respond. If you came in late, didn't give, just say, hey, this was too good for me not to sow, go back and sow. And let's do what God has called us to do. Church, we have work to do. And it happens by us partnering together. I love you. Let's do what God's called us to do. And I'll see you Tuesday night online at the well. I love you. Peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Revolutionary family, have you signed up for a life group? Stop trying to navigate through this thing called life alone. We're so much better together. Sign up today.